Welcome to the Success Ascent. My name is Pat Mancuso and I'm the creator and host of our show. And today we have a very special guest. He goes by Mr. Awesome. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Eric here before we get started. So Eric Swanson is an international keynote speaker. He's an award-winning uh, number one national bestseller in five different categories. And I asked him before, and it's 13 and counting books. He speaks to, uh, on average, to more than 1 million people per year and honored to be invited to speak to Business and Entrepreneurial School of Harvard University, as well as joining the TED Talk family with his latest TEDx speech called A Dose of Awesome. I can't wait to hear more about that. Eric is both versatile in his approach and effectiveness in a wide array of topics. You can easily find Eric sharing stages with some of the most talented and famous speakers of the world, such as Brian Tracy, NASA, NASA's performance coach, Dr. Dennis Waitley from the book and the movie, The Secret, Bob Proctor, the late Bob Proctor, Jack Canfield, John Assaraf, millionaire maker, Laura Langmeyer, co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Sharon Lecter, legendary movie motivator, Les Brown. Man, you know a ton, ton of people, Mr. Awesome. I, I got to get to know you. I should work for missing persons. I know everybody. There you go. I love it. <laughs> Eric has also created and developed the super popular Habitude Warrior Conference, which has a two-year waiting list and includes 33 top speakers, all in TED Talk style event, which has quickly climbed to one of the top 10 events in the United States. Eric, Eric's motto is NDSO, no drama, serve others. Eric, welcome to the show. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you, Pat. You rock, rock and roll. Let's do this. I love it. I love it. Shout out to our mutual friend, Don Hobbs. I don't know if he's listening live, but we talked. We were talking before. And, he's in my uh, living room. Hey, Don, they're talking about you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, Eric, I always like to have some fun with my guests. And, and we, you know, I read your bio, an amazing bio, and you, you've got an amazing track record there. Tell us something about Eric that maybe people don't know or you haven't shared before. Wow. All right. Um, okay. I'll tell you this. I love mountain biking. Now I'm not, I'm not good at it. <laughs> okay. Like I love, I try to stay on this side of the handlebars, but sometimes I go over them and it's a lot of fun, but I love mountain biking. I love bikes. And, uh, and I, apparently I, I like buying a lot of bikes. So that's one thing I don't think that, that many people know about me. Yeah. So you've got a big bike collection. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, Eric, you know, the Success Ascent is about entrepreneurs and their journey of success. And, and we know that that journey, you know, obviously would desire for it to be up. And yet we know sometimes it could be sideways, might be backwards, but we're always ascending, if you may. So I always love to start off talking with entrepreneurs like yourself, business owners, and, and say, OK, so where did you get started? Where did the itch come to be an entre become an entrepreneur? Wow, great question. So yeah, the the itch came where where I, I got thrown into it. <laughs> I mean, uh, really, isn't that like most of us? Uh, I mean, we we had the heart to 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 be in, into it, but the itch came like literally. It was like sink or swim. Like I, I wasn't getting any jobs, uh, any any career, you know, positions in these corporations, mainly because my my grades in college were not great. Okay. So, so, so then we're like, I'm like, uh, anyway, I have a lot of stories about that, but so I decided, okay, well maybe it's, you know, I have to, um, as another buddy of mine says, uh, you have to bet on yourself. So I, I said, okay, I I'm all in betting on myself. And I decided to, to really, if, if, if you're not going to invest in yourself, who are you going to invest in? Right. And, and, and that was it. I was like, okay, well, Look, I always say this, um, stick in the pocket, right? Or stay in the pocket, like a football term, right? If you're a quarterback, right. what do you do? You stay in the pocket because you've got these defenders and the defenders are the people around you that support you, that believe in you, right? right. They're the cheerleaders for you saying, you can do it, Pat. You can do it. I believe in you. And what's interesting is sometimes they believe in you more than you believe in yourself. That is so, true. That so is I decided true. to believe in myself and, and, and get out there. And I said, well, if they're doing it then I could do it. And then, you know what? This is something I've never said before in any, any environment like this ever in my life. And I'll, I'm going to say it here. So you're the I first one it. to hear it. Here it is. And this is such a weird, oh, come back on stage. I like you there as well. Um, <laughs> this is such a weird thing to say, Pat, but it's so true. Here's what happened in my mind. Um, in my, I was 25, 26, 27, when I really got into, into, into entrepreneurship. And I was asking myself, I had that limiting belief factor. Okay. Yeah. And I was saying, 
I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do it. I can't do that. Look at all these people. I'm looking at the TV and I'm seeing all these corporations and all these things that they're doing. And how am I ever going to do that? And, and, and you know what motivated me? This is so weird to say, but I promise you, I've never said this live ever. Love what it. motivated me was the fact that I kept on seeing these CEOs of corporations get like getting in trouble. Like they did wrong. They yeah. went to jail. They yeah. did this. They did that. I'm like, what? These people who I looked up to right. are doing this and they do that and they do th- and, and, and and whatever embezzlement or yeah. this, that, whatever the case is. I mean, I'm not right. talking about like it's negative bad things. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the Bernie Madoff that. type of deal. The yeah. Bernie Madoff type of deal. Yeah. Tell you what, Pat, I looked at it like, well, gosh, why am I putting all of them on this pedestal yeah. and yet they're going to jail? They're doing things they're doing wrong. I'm never going to do wrong like that. So I'm going to start betting on myself and believing in myself and building my empire in the right way. And that's honestly, that's one of the things that really catapulted my success. I love it. I love it. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because you and I talked before we got started and I'm in the process of writing a book and you've written 13 and counting. And that's the reason that you just talked about with a slight variation is why I'm writing the book on leadership that I am because I see so many leaders and CEOs that just aren't making the right decisions. And I, I have this, like, how could you make that decision? And, and there's a framework to what is common as to why CEOs and business leaders appear to make bad decisions. And so it's just, it's, it's ironic that you said that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. You just gave me another uh, book title for my next book. We're on the same page. Oh, I love that. I love that. I'll take the royalty check. That's me, guys. That's me. Nobody's taking this. That's mine. We're on the same page. I love it. I love it. (laughs) So, so Eric, let's talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. So what do you feel like is the biggest ceiling or the biggest challenge that you hit that ultimately you broke through and how did you break through it? Oh, well, let's just talk about a local uh, uh, um, a recent one. <laughs> and when I, I, I mean I local, it. I mean the world. And it started in March of 2020. Uh, yeah. Uh, COVID? Yeah, hello. <laughs> I mean, hello. I mean, hello. You know, we uh, we just, guys, we just went through a a, a, a transition, right? right? A transition of, of are you going to, and, and an even playing field transition. Oh. You know, what, what happened with the pandemic, I mean, it's, extremely sad obviously with with the deaths and and so forth i i realize that but interesting enough if the there there are two types of people in the world people who make things happen people just watch things happen right the third type is the person that says what happened all right so so (laughs) what, what we did was we said okay well, we're going to pivot a little bit. There was a great book called Pivot. Yep. Another great um, uh, buddy of mine, uh, Scott Duffy, wrote a, a book about pivoting. And it's all about changing and looking inside. Again, looking internal, right? You go to the mirror of success. Brian Tracy always used to say this to me. Go to the mirror of success. Talk to your boss. When that person is is um, is uh, uh, effective, then your, then your raise will be effective as well. And that's what I did. I bet on myself. I said, okay, well, believe in myself. What do I do? stay in the pocket again. What's yeah. that mean? Well, go back to the basics, all right? Go back to the basics of what really excelled you in the first place and and look at the challenge and say, well, and I always say this to myself. I say, well, who better to deal with a challenge like this than me? I mean, right. I got this. I got right. this, right? And uh and and also, I don't leave I I, I leave how do I say this? I leave the drama out, right? I right. I look at it and say, okay, here's a situation and, and I'm not going to allow that to dictate my future in a negative way. Like our friend Deepak Chopra talks about how many of you, how many of us in the world are allowing people to rent space in our minds, and yet we're not even charging them rent for it. Yeah. And actually, that statement alone, if we could probably spend days talking about how that space. Let's do it. Rent. Let's do it. I have yeah, four days. Rented by hey, uh, Joe, we got four more days on this summit. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so. In that entrepreneurial journey, what has surprised you? Um, other people giving up. Okay. That surprises me. It surprises me that people get excited to do their journey and yet they they stop. They stop. It's it's a uh, like the Seinfeld uh, stopping short with Kramer. <laughs> it's, I used to watch a lot of Seinfeld. But stop stopping short for yourselves, right? Yeah. That's what surprised me about other people. Like for me, I keep on. I'm like, 
why am I so successful and moving past all these people? It's because other people are doing circles and yeah. they, they just don't believe in themselves. They don't take it to the next the next level. And they, they start, they start living in that. What, what our friend Les Brown, you know, Les as well. Yep. Um, Les, Les says, what's, what's a rut? You know, R U T T a rut, a rut is only six feet from a grave is what he used to say. Mm. And it's wow. true. We stay in yeah. this rut. We stay in this. And then what happens is you make that your new normal, right? Yeah. Stop making it a new normal. It's like, it's like Wayne Dyer used to say this as well. Wayne, I followed Wayne. He was my first, uh, my first love in self development. Yeah, <laughs> um, amazing, amazing guy. Yeah, he used to say this. He would go to these um, retreats, and he he noticed he went to one retreat, and there were uh, twelve different um, jacuzzis or or uh, uh, yes, uh, hot tubs. Right. And, uh, and and he noticed that everyone would would gravitate towards you know the the. The ninety to one hundred and you know three or some or one hundred and something, but not go per past to, to hotter or colder hot tubs. They would always just gravitate towards the middle, <laughs> and it's interesting how a lot of people do that. And if you think about it, Pat, check this out. And I'll use my hands as an example. If you have a scale of from here to here, right? Yeah. There we go. So you've got a hundred percent. What happens is you have eighty percent of the people right in the middle. Yep. And most of them are paycheck to paycheck, by the way. Yeah. So they're right in the middle. And then what happens is you've got the 10% over here that are just getting into the business. And then you got the other 10% that are excelling in such a great yeah. way. Yeah, it's a great way. That's a great analysis. That's a great way to look at great visual. So um, so then let me ask you one other question. What's the biggest mistake you've made as an entrepreneur? Oh, man. Let me or get the that. Biggest learning, I have a list here. I have a list here. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, you know, the biggest, I don't know if I could, I could pinpoint one of the biggest. I mean, most painful. I, I think, you know, something that comes to mind is, um, so I, I run events and, and we yep. put awesome events and great people on our stages. And I guess, you know, letting some, some people slip through the cracks and not vetting them as much as we should mm -hmm. have, because you know, what happens is it's egg on their face and my face as well, yeah. because I'm the one who represented that person. So, yeah. it, you know, it's, it, it's just going back to the basics yeah. and, and believing in yourself and, and saying to yourself. And another thing that I didn't do until years later is put myself on that stage. I started years ago, Pat, like, uh, I mean, you know, this is when, when I was, let's see what year, basically back in 2008, something okay. like that, um, doing really big events. And um, people kept on asking me, well, why aren't you speaking? Why aren't you speaking? I'm like, no, 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 it's for them. It's for them. They're the famous ones. And, uh, and, you know, I kept on pushing it off. And and now I realize, or back back then, about three years later, I was like, all right, I'll put myself on stage. I think I put myself on stage because there was an opportunity there that I had to fill. You know, really, I wasn't looking for the opportunity. I was looking for the replacement. I was like, well, somebody's got to do it. So I'll step up. Wow. And I stepped up and then I broke into the awesomeness. Yeah. So that really was kind of the big breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah, that's wow. one of them. You know, and, and that was uh, catapulted by... The other breakthrough that I had um, prior, which I, I call pa passing the torch, you know, or or the baton, right? So yep. you have a baton, right? You're you're running. I mean, you're running. I don't I don't run, but um, you're running. You know, <laughs> people are like, do you work out? Yeah, regularly, once yeah. a year or so. So 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 passing the baton. What happened was, and I always carry here's um here's one on in my desk right here. And whenever I'm traveling and I'm on stage, I always have this little tiny microphone. In it's tiny, it's little. Look, yeah, yeah. And it it came with a little cord. I cut the cord off because I I mean, what am I gonna plug this into my phone? What are you gonna do? <laughs> so so I just took the little little tiny you know uh, silver thing. It's it's kind of a hard plastic or whatever, and and I put it in my pocket. And, and I'm walking into a Starbucks or somewhere or walking in wherever. And I realize, you know, I always, I, you always notice it. Right. Yep, and, yep. It, it, and I always remind myself, Hey, I'm a speaker, act like one. I'm, I'm, I'm a professional it. entrepreneur, act like one. So who gave me this? Well, I gave this to myself, but who passed me the, the baton of the torch was Brian Tracy at the Javits center. And I was working with a guy named Gary Troy. Um, if yeah. you know Gary in the business, he's a great guy. And uh, and he used to promote Brian Tracy in his events. Well, he had Brian on stage and I was coming to represent Brian and Brian spoke on stage and then they were supposed to put me on stage as well. But everyone wanted to go and hang out with Brian. There were 2000 people getting up, okay? <laughs> Literally getting up and going to follow Brian. And you know what Brian Tracy did? He was walking down the steps and he saw me walking up. 
and I was all dressed up and I was ready to rock. And, and apparently the organizer didn't have enough microphones. So Brian literally took off his mic, his lapel mic and handed it to me. And he did this, Pat, he looked at me like this. He goes, start talking now. Oh my God. Oh <laughs> That's my God. what Brian Tracy said to me. He goes, You're if you don't start talking now, you're gonna lose the crowd. They're all gonna follow me. I go, Yes, sir. So I started talking and boom, everyone sat back in their seats and, and wow. we did another hour uh training right there. And it was wow. amazing. What wow. a great, what a great experience that was. Yeah, he's a great. I mean, all the people, many of the people that like you talked about and we referenced in your bio, I mean, just all like life-changing people, right? I mean, Brian Tracy, you know, some of the let's say younger people right now, you know, like they, you would say Zig Ziglar and they'd look and go, who's Zig Ziglar and Jim Rome and Wayne Dyer and they, Brian Tracy, and they go, who's Brian Tracy. And, yeah. and they just, they, there's, you know, we have some people today that maybe have that stature, but I'm not so sure that they could carry the torch of some of those people. Yeah. Like the Bob Proctors or, yeah. or, or the Napoleon Hills or, yeah. you know, I mean, you're talking Jim about like, like Ogman Dino or yep. Charlie Tremendous Jones. I had an amazing time hanging out with Charlie Tremendous Jones. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these these people are the grandfathers of success. Yeah. And and guess what, Pat? You and I are carrying that that torch that torch to the next generation yeah, and, and and passing the baton. Well, because they've left they left such legacies, right? They left such material and content. Yeah. So let's shift gears. No, okay. let's stay on this gear. I'm just <laughs> I, love it. I love it. <laughs> um, so I love what you're doing. And, and, you know, so let's start with, I'll just open it up and talk. You know, your, your focus is habits and attitude. And I 100% behind, agree, support, teach, lead. I mean, just so much. So why do you think people struggle with both of those categories first? Let's just talk where the struggle is. Yeah, I mean it's it's a simple answer. The struggle is um, uh, comfort comfortability. <laughs> is that a word? It's it's a comfort zone. You know, like we we're talking about with Dr. Wayne Dyer talking about the hot tubs. You know, we we gravitate towards the comfort zone instead of looking internally. You know, what's what, we only use ten percent or if that of our potential. Right. I believe that's I believe that's true. You know, what, what I did was I went ahead and, and designed something where I, I time block. I do ninety minute time blocks. Okay. And I excel majorly. It's like a, it's like if you're bicycling, which I'm getting into biking now, apparently, um, you know, you, you're, you're going to draft, you're going to draft, 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 drafting means going behind something else, right? That means following the leader, right? That means uh, uh, learning success, success leaves clues, success patterns, right? right? And then you excel. And what do you do? You sprint, you start sprinting for that X amount of time. Well, I sprint 90 minutes a day, every day for 90 minutes. And I'm talking about sprint, meaning Grab the phone, on one right? Thing. Right. right? Yeah, grab the uh, phone and and make those what the, what I call what the heck calls, right? So right. you make three what the heck calls. Those could be uh, client calls. This could be um, a touch and base calls. It could be a uh, cold calls, right? Yeah. It's ninety minutes, right? You could s space those out. But the real reason why people struggle is because they don't look at themselves as that amazing, awesome. Oh my gosh, you could do anything. That the the level of comfort zone, and it's it's what um Brian used to call. Um, uh, uh, the, the self, I think it's self comfort or no, um, what did he call it? I guess it's called the self comfort zone. Um, he called it something else. I'll, I'll figure it out in a little bit, but yeah. it's a thermostat. It's your self yeah. thermostat, yeah, your financial thermostat. Yeah. Well, not only financial, yeah. it's anything. Right. Yeah, so sure, for, sure. for example, look, like, like you and I are going to go to a wedding, uh, this weekend in Puerto Rico, we're going to hang out with Don Hobbs and you and I, and, and, and the three of us are going to be asked to go and, and, and dance on the stage, right? Yeah. Right there. And you know how Don dances and you probably I do. Know how I very well. no. <laughs> so, so basically it's that thermostat. Like how well do you feel that you are a dancer, yeah. a speaker, a driver in traffic, you know, how well do you feel that you're uh, an awesome relationship? Um, uh, 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 like a, a giving a deposits to the bank, right? You right. got to put deposits into the bank of relationships as well. Yeah. Right. You know, what's interesting is you say this and, and, you know, and I know you do, you know, coaching and consulting and, and I do as well. And, and um, yet you're picking up the phone and lead generating. And I find it very interesting that owners sometimes forget that that's still important, even for the owner of the company, right? And so I'm so glad that you brought that up. I'll tell you two two things come to mind on that, if I if I may yeah, mention. Absolutely. One is I learned that from a guy named Steve Schiffman. Steve Schiffman. Steve Schiffman. If you walk into any FedEx Kinkos, remember they're called uh, 
Kinko's back then, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, you walk yeah. into any of those uh, FedEx offices, and you'll see like just walk into any of the uh, uh, the book shelves or the audio books. Remember yeah. audio books um, or audio cassettes, right? And you'll see she Steve Schiffman's books there, all of them there. And I ended up reaching out to him. You know why? I looked in the back of the book, and it said to contact me, call this number. It was a local New York number. So you know what I did? I contacted him because in the book it says contact me. <laughs> so most people don't do this. Yeah. And so I want to mention two things on that. One is Steve Schiffman is the one who uh, he he do, did a lot of cold call, not cold call for dummies, but cold call um, uh, books and and just how to get appointments and sure. really get out there. Right. Great guy. Yeah. And uh, and then I called him and I ended up hiring him to speak on stages with me uh, for, for yeah. about a year or two. Great guy. And um, and the th other thing I want to mention is usually the people who are uh, you feel that are not as accessible are the most accessible. Mm. And, and, and they really are like the success uh, 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 quotient is is reach out to these people. They can only just say no. Right, or they're, right. they're never going to say no, by the way. They're always going to say they're busy with something else. So that's fine. Um, so, yeah, so, exactly. yeah. And it's just, just reach out to them, reach out to them and, and, and highlight them. Here's a secret. You guys want to know a secret? Here's a secret. I just got an award. I should have brought it and showed you on stage. I mean, on, on your stage here. Um, I just got an award. It's the Mr. Awesome Award. It was, it was for one of the Think and Grow Rich things. And and it's amazing. It's I'm, I'm so blessed to have that. But it's interesting. You know, if you run a company or you run a whatever you're doing, entrepreneurship, yeah. create an award. Just yeah. create one right now. Oh, create right. one. Like like the best coolest dude award or whatever. I don't know. Just create one. And and then call a lot of people and say, hey, I just want to honor you with this thing. What are they gonna say? No. No. <laughs> They're gonna say yes. I love it. So so let me ask you this question. I want to go back to the the mindset piece because this is what you do, right? And, and and you do it really well. What do you, how do you pull somebody out of that limiting belief, if you may, that they don't have that capacity, that ability, they don't see themselves going to that point? Like, give us some thoughts on how, like, you're talking with me and I say, hey, you know, Eric, um, you know, I just don't see myself doing that. Like, what would you say to me if you had two minutes or three minutes? Well, okay, so... Are you saying I have two minutes or three minutes to answer this question? No, no. So, <laughs> oh, we got plenty of time. So, so what I would say is that there's a couple of things that you just that 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 you just brought up to mind. One is if they're saying no, that's not for me. That's not I I, I, don't, I don't see myself. I, yeah, I don't see myself. That's another level of the question or answer. Okay, what I mean by that is. You know, how do I say this? I, I got really, really good at closing individuals, closing people. Okay. Really good. Like really good. <laughs> All right. And, and what I mean by really good, I was, I mean, really good. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, like the Tony guys, Tony Robbins guys were calling me to help me train them to help them close tickets for Tony. That's how good I was. All right. I and, and I still am. I'm, I'm amazing. That's awesome. But, but here's the point. Sometimes you can close people too much for something that they don't want. They really right. don't resonate with. So what I like to do is I like to ask a series of questions. And no, I don't have the questions handy right now. Right. But ask a series of questions uh, to, to, to really see if it's something that they truly, genuinely resonate with to own, to be involved in, to move to the next level. To And I say to own because they're going to have to bring that on to themselves. I'll give you an example. Um, do you want to be a best-selling author? Who knows? I don't know who I'm talking to. And maybe somebody's like, oh my God, I'd love to do that. I'm so scared. I'd love to do it, but I don't know if it's me, right? So that's the real question you're asking. And I'm going to address that yeah. part in a little bit. But what if they say, oh, I don't know if that's me. Like, like they really don't want that. Right. And you'll see their physiology change. You'll see that it's not that they want it and they're scared. It's that they actually don't want to be. Mm -hmm. And 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 I want to find that out at, at, at the beginning. I, and it could be an authorship. It could be anything, really. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're what we're talking about. Sure. But find out if it's truly something that they are striving for, and and because it may not be. And and I bring that up because a lot of us as entrepreneurs or business owners or people who are influencers and promoting uh, whatever you're promoting, sometimes we try to fit the the square into the round peg kind of thing. Right. Uh, as a, as a child, you know, with that, that thing. And I would just yep. break the whole thing. So, so, so sometimes we, sometimes we I'm carving out. yeah, I'm getting like a jigsaw thing. I'm carving the whole thing out. And so sometimes we try to carve it out too much for the person yep. when honestly, 
and I'm, I'm going to say this, it's going to be profound. At least I hope it is for your audience. Is <laughs> I love it when you laugh, man. I made, I like <laughs> making you laugh. Um, here's the profound statement. I make a lot more money by saying no, yeah. by actually having people not say yes. I make tons more money. You know, I'll give you an example. I, I run a, I don't know why I'm pointing back here. I run a, uh, no, it's okay. Stay, stay this screen. All right. so there's Point back there. there. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I had a lanyard back here somewhere. Um, I, I, I created something called the Habitude Warrior Conference. And we have a two year waiting list to get on my stages, like literally big speakers to get on my stages. Well, we created that that way because we wanted to say no to a lot of people so that the right people could say yes to us. So it's it's a it's a mentality. Okay, yeah. so that's one section of the answer. The other section that you were actually asking is, you know, what do you say to somebody if they want it, but yet they don't feel like they believe in themselves? That's really the question, right? They're right. saying, no, it's not for me, or I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, or I'm scared, or and so forth. I always say, look, 1952, Roger Bannister, right? And they're like, 1952, what decade was it? What year is it? What uh, century is that? Yeah, last century. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Roger Bannister, why do I bring up that story? Well, you know the story. Roger yeah. Bannister was the very first person to run a sub four minute mile, yeah. all right? So under four minutes, all right? The, the running the mile, usually people were four minutes to five minutes, you know, the fastest back then was four minutes and 12 seconds or something. And Roger did it in like three minutes and whatever it was, uh, a point, whatever. And he broke the barrier. So that's huge all in its in its own. But what was really cool, the stats tell us that about 16 or 20 other people did it within the next month or the next two months mm -hmm. after he did it. And the question that uh, I ask is, did Nike come out with the newest shoe that really helped all of them? Or was it our own mindset. Nike in between our, our mindset, right? Yeah. Our belief system. So um, if you really want it, then believe in yourself, number one. And, yep. and how do you believe in yourself? Well, here, I always have a, always have a, a, a piece of a pad of paper. I right? always, because for different reasons, here's the two people that got in trouble in my mastermind the other day. So I just, <laughs> anyway, so I always have a pad of paper and, uh, and, and one, one of the, one of the, sorry, Aaron and Jessica, yeah, one sorry. Of the things, if you're watching, uh, one of the things that, that I do is I'll put down at the top of the uh, page here, the 30 list. Okay, so actually, everyone write this write this down. I'm going to put it down myself here. The 30 list. And then what I want you to do is, and your listeners, is go ahead and create a 30 list. I want you to write down 1 through 30 on the left-hand side of the paper and write down 30 reasons why someone should call you and say, I want you. I need you. You're the author I'm looking for. You're the speaker. You're the whatever. You're the person that, that is going to be the best for this job, right? And the first five to 10 agree pretty easy, right? Yeah. Number one is I'm really good looking. Number two is I'm cool. <laughs> Number three is I'm really good looking again. Anyway, yeah. so, yeah. The, you know, and, and I, I kid around, by the way, but. The, well, you have to. Life yeah. is too short. Yeah. yeah. But listen to me. Listen to this for a second. I do kid around. Obviously, yeah. I'm kidding around. I'm just I'm joking around. I'm not I'm not this ego kind of guy. But then again, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. So my subconscious mind right now is saying, you are good looking. You are great. You are awesome. You are, you are ex exactly what people are looking for. Right. And most people don't do that. And, and people say, well, you're brainwashing yourself. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why not? I'm brainwashing yeah. myself for the good of this exercise. Right. Yeah. 30 lists, five to 10 are going to be really easy. Write those down. The next five to 20 are going to be tougher, Pat. And you know what you do? You go to your friends, you go to your family, you go to Ashley and say, Ashley, give me three reasons why you feel I'm the right person for that job, for this job, for that stage, right? Why should why should Les Brown and Brian Tracy and Eric Swanson say, I need Pat Mancuso next to us on this panel? Because I know Don Howes. The, yeah, you got the, the celebrity uh, <laughs> status there with Don. Yeah, so so you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no. Give yourself that, that awesomeness, right? And, 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 and then- People are going to have to dig deeper to get the 30 done, the 30 yeah. list. And you know who you go to? You go to your past clients. Yeah. You, go to your, you go to your uh, wall of fame on your on your YouTube channel, right? And you say, well, let me re-watch all these, right? Why are you putting them on there? Do you think everyone's just sitting there watching your video testimonials? Why don't you watch your own video test testimonials and then start living the way they are teaching you to, to uh, telling you that you are? You know, you, you touched on something and I feel fortunate and I don't know where I picked this up, but I picked it up somewhere. I was part of an amazing program for 11, almost 12 years. And I had 12,000 people go through this program in my rooms. It wasn't my program. 
It was a program that I was leading. And every time we left that room, I passed a journal around. There'd be 100 to 150 people in the room. And I asked them to write in that journal how their life was impacted by being in this particular program. And they would write that, but then they'd also write what you're talking about, about me. And mm -hmm. we went back to those journals recently and, and you're, you're taught, you just, you just nailed something for me. I mean, it was just, it was, that's what happened. That was yeah. the greatness of having other people tell you about that. So thank you for, for connecting some dots for me. Absolutely, man. Th so, thank you, Colin Farrell. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, there you go. There yeah. you go. <laughs> you so, look just like him. <laughs> what's that? You look like Colin, uh, Colin, uh, what's the comedian on Saturday Night Live? Colin Farrell. Oh, oh, now, no, see, I, I've been called Tom Cruise and I gotta look some them others, up. but not him. So I, Tom I Cruise, go, nice. I, yeah, I, they were blind. Eric, they were blind. I mean, seriously. <laughs> okay, so let's shift gears. What's the best advice that you've ever been given? Business or professional or personal? Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's what Brian Tracy taught me. He said, he said, um, diversify yourself. He said, don't, don't learn a hundred percent of my information, learn as much as you can, but then put in your own personality and start working with my friends. This is what Brian told me. His friends were Zig, Jim, um, uh, Tony, uh, yeah, Wayne. I'm just mentioning Bob Proctor, names. you yeah. guys know the, the, the yeah. last names. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I started doing. Jack, you know, Jack Canfield, yeah. I shared the yeah. stage with Jack uh, a few times. He's great. You know, and it, what a, what an amazing man, you know, Jack Canfield. I'll yeah. tell you what, the, the way I met Jack Canfield, you don't want to know one of the, want to know the way I met Jack Canfield is a great, great. Uh, no, you don't want to know. Oh, I do. I do. Right, I here do. It so here's, 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 here's the way I met Jack Canfield. Check this out. Um, I, I had uh, a hat and I had a, um, a, a clipboard, actually a clipboard and a pen and a suit. That's what I, that's what I did. And here's what I did. I went over, it was in Houston, Texas at a place called the Sofitel Hotel, Sofitel. Yep. And I, I, I found out he was speaking there and, uh, and I went over there and I just, all I did was I, I hugged the side of the room. Okay. The, and I went towards the front near the stage. And all I did was I stood there with my clipboard and my black suit and my hat, my my little my hat, my I had like a like a really cool fedora hat, all right. And uh, it, but it was black, <laughs> and I just stood there like this, and 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 uh, and Jack starts walking off stage and and coming towards the the um the book he was going to book sign and so forth. And I I turned to him and I said I said Mr. Canfield, do you know exactly what time your flight leaves? And he said, yeah, I think I have it on my on my PDA <laughs> back then, like with these PDAs, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blackberry. I go, great, excellent. Um, just one bag or how many bags? He goes, no, just I have the book bag back there, and and then my, uh, I go, great, I'll put it in the car. So <laughs> I drove him back to the airport. <laughs> that's how I met Jack Canfield. Wow, that's I love that. I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so let's flip that upside down. What's the worst advice you've ever been given? That hopefully you didn't follow, and if you did, what did you learn? Uh, the worst advice, um, I won't give specifics, but it was when somebody, a lot of them said, trust me. <laughs> mm. When somebody says, trust me, yeah, I always question it. And I'm like, all right. And you know what? My intuition, I have, I have a formula that I, I designed for myself. It's just an intuition, my gut feeling. And I call it the 90% formula. And the 90% formula, it's, it's just mine. It's what I use. Yep. You guys can use it as well. Basically, 90%, I started tracking it for a year or two. And I realized every time I would think about something and, and, and say, should I do this? Should I not? Should I go? Should I not? You know, you could even do this on a simple form where you're like, you know, your friends ask you out to dinner and you're like, I really don't feel like going. I don't know. And then you go and then something happens. You get a flat tire or something. Yep. Happens. You're like, you know, I knew I it. Have listened to my gut. 90% of the time I'm correct. Yeah. 90%. That's what I call my 90% formula. So you know what? Just trust yourself, right? Yeah. And when somebody says, trust me, they're hiding something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Trust you. I love that. Again, believe in yourself, bet on yourself, trust yourself. You know, and I'll, t I'll add to that one more second. You know, Brian Tracy, you guys probably already know who was my main mentor. Yep. Brian Tracy taught me. And, and by the way, I'm, I'm writing a, uh, the newest book with Brian Tracy called the principles of David and Goliath. And mm. I don't even have a copy of it. It's it's, it just came out, check it out on amazon.com or Barnes and Noble or wherever you shop for books and uh, check it out. The principles of David and Goliath. You know what? I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the chat too. Love so it. You can, I love it. No you can add it. But he, he used to tell me something. Uh, there you go. And then I'll put the uh, website. They can get it there too. So he used to tell me this. 
he he's he would say he'd say eric watch people you know don't don't just go off of what they're saying trust me you know it'll be this 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 that's just them talking just watch them once they say oh yeah i'm this great then watch them for a week two weeks five weeks get those those points of references and and once you start seeing that then trust in yourself to make yeah. that judgment yeah i right? love it i love it Okay, Eric, you have been amazing. I'm going to do a little PSA, and then I'm going to give you the final uh, words here. So first of all, listeners, thank you so much uh, for listening, for subscribing, for leaving us ratings, for following, for all the stuff that you do in all these different places that you do it. Uh, we wouldn't do what we do without you, and it's why we do what we do. Um, you can go to www.thesuccessascent.com, or you can go to patmancuso.com, either place. You can pick up the podcast and all the places you listen. So we just appreciate you and appreciate the feedback that we get. And we have some amazing guests and we appreciate them as well. So, Eric, um, we got some goodies we're going to share. And, and I asked you to come up with a final thought as we as we uh, end our show here today. So what would you share with our listeners as a final thought? And then I'm going to scroll some goodies here down at the bottom. Absolutely. All right. So I just put one of the final thoughts in the chat as well. So it is uh, no drama, serve others. NDSO. I wear a dog tag, a dog tag or um, whatever these are called, <laughs> dog tags, right? And, yep. uh, and you know, I, I, I wasn't in military, and I, but I love military and I love uh, first responders. And I live on an island here in Southern California that's it's very military. And it just uh, literally says NDSO, no drama, serve others. And that's what it's all about. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Look at things to help people. Stop looking at the drama. Start looking at helping and assisting people. And at this level that you should be at right now, um, start start working on the fact that you, it's all about collaboration rather than competition. Yeah. And I'll leave I'll leave you with another thought. Um, give yourself reminders. So this one is is a, a bracelet that says decide to be awesome. Mm -hmm. right? Decide to be awesome. And yeah, one of my websites, decide to be awesome.com. Go there and get some free free stuff. But what's also cool is is highlight uh, a reminder for yourself. And on the back of this, if you see on, on my side that I, I can see for myself because it's facing me, yeah. is WWST. And that stands for what would Sharon think? And Sharon is Sharon Lecter. She's a dear friend of mine. Yep. And I look up to her thought patterns. I looked up, up to her classiness. She's a fabulous friend. Yep. And I always think, what would Sharon think? Right? What would Sharon do? Right? And, and I, I highlight that. Right. I love it. I love it. So you mentioned if they go to decide to be awesome.com, they're going to be able to get what? So there's a bunch of cool things there. Um, you can look at some of our masterminds. You can look at some of our, our book collaborations that we have. We've got um, books that are 13 series, uh, different books. Um, these are kind of sold out already to be in it. But, you know, if you're looking to be an, become an author, go there, connect with us, send us a message. You know, yes, it's a pay to play situation, but yeah. hey, it's a great opportunity for you to align yourself with some of these amazing speakers and authors of, of our day. Um, so that's really cool. You'll get some of my free books if you want them. Grab them. They're at decidetobeawesome.com. And then I also have a, um, a free, if for your guests, I'll do this, a free uh, session to check out one of our masterminds. Oh, and wow. that's the Ride Along guestpass.com oh, that's yep and so we'll, we'll we're streaming that right now right along guestpass.com and we'll make sure that we put that in the show notes show notes mr awesome you've been amazing i mean if we had uh, we could probably spend hours hours and hours so thank you so i got much. a question i got Go a question ahead. in the back i'm looking it's i'm squinting because i can't zoom it in is that one of bob proctor's big programs on the top shelf on the left uh the right there let's see it looks uh, like it Who's yeah it? no no, I don't no, know. Okay, all right. All right. Yeah, you're, actually, you're seeing that like this uh, thing here is an award. That's an award. That's oh, okay. No, but on the top shelf. Oh, the top shelf. That's a picture of my family. Okay, next to it. What's next to that's it? That's a little plaque. It's a Disney plaque. Oh, okay, all right. All right. Yeah, yeah, it says oh, this here. Like a, okay, now I can all see right. it. All can, right. If you can dream it, you can do it. There you go. Yeah. I, I have a I have a program, Bob Proctor's uh, program that he gave out to a lot of us. In fact, I think I have it behind me here somewhere. It's uh, it kind of looked like that plaque actually. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> awesome, no. man. This has been so much fun. You're you're amazing, and and I just uh, you know hats off. Ooh, here's my hat. Hats off to you, man, for you uh, for, for changing you people's lives. Well, Eric, thanks so much for your time today. Listeners, first of all, thank you so much. And as I end every show, listeners, be happy, be healthy, be safe until the next time we talk. Thanks so much.